Monday. Now, one of these items you guys have previously seen already, but because it was so cool and the kids liked it so much, we got a second one. The Bionic Shield. Da da da! <laughs> okay, a little corny. Um, hey, yeah, the Bionic Shield. Worked out really nice. I mean, uh, after we made the video, uh, the kids kind of messed with it a little bit and everything. It worked out really good. And we're starting up on shop class here pretty soon. So the kids need these things so they can start getting in on that lathe. So I figured, what the heck. But I thought before I give it to them, I would unbox this one. And, of course, keep it away from our shop supervisor. Notice the box is in good shape. I thought I'd open it up to you and show you what the previous one looked like when we took it out of the box. Trying to be a better YouTuber that I am. So let me bring you close. Okay guys, here we go. So again, once again, the Uvex Bionic Shield. Uh, it says on here it's by Honeywell. So again, um, maybe I'll put some more descriptions down below. Uh, again, it's an Amazon purchase, um, 30 some dollars. But I thought I'd show you guys, you know, if anything, just go see the first video. That's got information on it as well as um, how it fit on my daughter and all. But I thought I'd show you guys what it looks like when it gets out of the box. So, first off, there's the blue Star Wars face shield. It's really nice. Now, this has a blue covering. It's a p p uh, protective, of uh, like that plastic type um, Reynolds wrap uh, on the inside as well as the outside. So, you can, I suppose you could wear it and use it like this. I, I, don't think they'd be too much of an issue, except for the fact that it uh, probably would be a little bit harder to see through the, the double layers of blue. So, if you want to take the inside blue off and leave the outside one on there, I guess that would be okay. But I just took both off because it's simply for protecting the face shield during the packaging process. You know, when they make these, they cover them, they cut them all out and everything, they package it. So, so that's that part. The second one is um, just the headband system here. They give you nice little directions on the back for those that don't know how to put these together. Like other dads, I'm not saying it was me or anything that I had a problem, but... Uh, yep, yeah, so you just take it out. Let's see here. Let's open this bag up. Ta-da! There we go. Give you a nice little padded headband right here, if you guys can see that. I'm not sure if that'll come in. But it's a nice little padded headband. The kids thought it was fine. You know, they're not going to wear it for too long. They might wear it for 20 minutes or an hour at uh, the most. So, but uh, yeah, so that's the back. This is the front. And there's our holes right here. You got a hole here and a hole here. That's what these will connect to. You take these apart. Okay, so you take those little wing nuts apart there, or best lack of a better term. And then you have your adjustment points right here. And there's little holes that are right there, these four little holes right there and as, as well as here and they connect to a little pin that's right there, you guys are going to see that there's a little pin right there but anyhow, so they connect in making sure that both the uh, the gray bolts actually go into the uh, oops, not dropping everything gray bolts go into the holes and that little pin will end up locking into one of these little spots right back here that sits in here so I'm not sure if that's going to come through or not so get one side through go ahead and just uh, run your get your uh, uh, little wing nut or lack of a better term the knob and tighten it in place making sure that you put this in the exact same location so I did something like this or in that one that one there we go that's good what this is going to do is it, it there's two different spots on the bracket itself that allow you to, and I don't know if the light's going to help me at all or not, but there's actually two spots where this gray goes. So the headband could be more forward or more backwards. So it depends on how far off your face you want it. Do you want the person's face, you know, kind of in here? Do you want it closer, further away? So they give you two adjustments for that. But And that's it. And then, you know, like I said, it holds up pretty well. You know, it, it locks in pretty good. Um, no issues there. The knob, in order to uh, make the band adjust, it doesn't turn freely. You have to push it down, and then you can turn it. You can turn it up and loosen it and tighten it and everything else. So, and then when you're done, it just pops back up like that, and it's all good to go. 
So hopefully this has come out okay. But yeah, so that's the Uvex uh, Bionic Shield by Honeywell. So, all right. And no, that's not the only thing. I've got one more item for today's mail call Monday. And we needed it because I'm hoping I bought the right part because this is for the lathe. So let's grab that box and, oh, you know what? Hold on, where did I put that box? Oh, forgot, here it is. Ta-da, there we go. <laughs> now, this is gonna be pretty cool. I'll stoked to see if I bought the right part. So let me bring you in on this and show you what this is about. Okay, so, again, these are items that I have bought myself. Nobody's given me these, nobody's uh, paid me for any of this stuff. Not that that's a bad thing. Just saying, guys. Uh, so, this here was the insert. I guess it's a, uh, let me get the little box out of here to show you exactly. So, it's a chuck insert. And what this was supposed to do is, I have a big chuck, and I'll put a picture in there of what I'm talking about. The chuck grabs a hold of the material when you tighten it, if you're going to make a bowl or something. Well, the chuck itself was too big, and I bought this because this is supposed to fit that, that, that difference. It's supposed to make up the difference between the two. Got some packing grease on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that over there and see if it fits, and we'll go from there. But before we do that, we got one more thing in there, and that's this. This is something else. This was a drill, a drill chuck. Now, I bought the wrong one. And the tail that goes in, there's the, the headstock, which is the part that drives, uh, it makes, it spins everything, it's a motor is that. So that's the drive stock, and you have a tail stock. Well, the, the drill chuck goes into the tail stock, but I learned right away there are different types of diameters for tail stock. This is the tail right here. Now this, they pack this stuff really good. I say, it's not too bad. But, uh, so this here actually goes in here. Just take this off. This, some of you might recognize, this is just basically what you'd see on the end of your drills and such. Uh, drill presses, cordless drills, and stuff like that, or corded drills, and things of that nature. Well, you take these two things, and you've made them together like that. And that's where you have it. This tail actually goes into the tail stock and holds it. Then you have your key as well as what you do, you put your drill bit in here, so this holds still as the material sits at this side and the material spins, you take this and there's a handle at the end of your tailstock and this slowly pushes that drill bit into your material. So as your material spinning, the drill bit that's on here is digging out the, you know, the wood. So you can make your hole and make your hole very straight and centered. So, what I'm going to do is take you guys over because, of course, this isn't just a mail call Monday. This is going to be a little, how did I do this and did I buy the right thing? Um, this I know right off the bat, when I bought this, this was made in China. I'll put that right out there. I am not sure about the, the Chuck and Supernova Chuck insert. So, we'll take uh, these two things over to the drill press and see if they're going to connect. I said drill press, didn't I? I didn't mean drill press. So here's the other bionic shield from the previous review. And uh, so this here is what this is for, the attachment to this. Okay, this is the wood turning chuck. So this will actually connect over here. And this is the headstock, and this moves the material. Okay, then this part is the tail stock, and that's what this connects to. Hopefully, yep, there we go. I got the right one. So this goes in place like that. And you have a little handle here that locks it down in place. And then what ends up happening is, here we'll do this, crank this back. Let me just put out here, I am not in any way, shape, or form a wood turning specialist. Not at all. If you think you're going to get some uh, uh, really uh, cool secrets of wood turning, not me. Okay, now that that's over with. So what we do here is we loosen this up back here, and you turn this, and as I turn this, you'll see the chuck was recessing. See that? So you put your drill bit in here and you put your material in and then as the material here is spinning you take this and you crank this handle on the tailstock and it drills. This will move out and then this will drill. It's extending. 
It's getting bigger and bigger. So that's what it does. Now you might be thinking, well, what if your material is smaller? Well, you adjust back here. There's a lever back here that you move and you adjust, and then this whole tailstock will slide forward. Let me loosen it up. And the whole tailstock slides forward somehow. It does, I promise you. I just can't get it with one hand. But anyhow, I digress. We came here to make sure that parts attach properly. So, okay, so the first thing we want to do then is this inside is supposed to attach to the outside. Now, according to what I saw, there we, oops, wrong way. Ah, being a knucklehead already, there we go. Okay, so that attaches this way, and that's gonna spin. Now, our wood turning chuck, is supposed to attach to this end. Here we go, just like that. I probably could do it the other way. I'll take this off and attach this to this. There we go. Turns in. Perfect! It fits. And the reason why they do this is because there's different sizes. This is 7 8 I believe is what they called it. This is 7 8 And they make these different sizes here so you can use this on a multitude of different lathes. And then of course this just gets screwed on like this. Where's the... Just like that, there we go. So as the tailstock is spinning, the material, tailstock spinning the material that gets locked in these little jaws right here, which this is, there's an Allen key on this side here, and if you spin it, see if I can spin it by hand, I don't have the Allen key, no. Uh, these little teeth right here open and close around the material that you want to put in here. So that works kind of nice. And then this material will spin and then this will get pushed in there. So if you had something long and you want like a big bit on here and you want to drill it out, you'd have that. Um, or else you could just omit this all together and as this spins you would have your rest right here and you could take your tools and you can carve all the material that's in here to make like a bowl or a cup or something like that. So that's the goal. So guys, hopefully this will help you. Uh, like I said earlier, you know, the kids and I are both going to be learning on this. I've done some research on the, the lathe and that's what got me to trying to buy the right equipment for it. Um, I'm, we're trying to do everything, you know, you know, you want to do it safely with the kids. Hence the, sh the face shields and, you know, we're going to take it slow. Um, but we're thinking about making a video series on this, just basically learning the shop and as well as what we might be making. So what I'm thinking we're going to do is we're probably going to all do a bowl or a serving dish of some sort and then we'll go on to doing something that we just want to do. Uh, is you know maybe she'll want to make a cup or something like that and then my son and I will do that uh, the fishing sets. Uh, we'll see. But the first thing is safety. Second thing is all the right equipment to keep it uh, safe and to do the job right. And then three, it's getting to slowly learn the tools and everything and how to use them in the feel of the lathe and, the, you know, all the little uh, um, knives and stuff like that. So, anyhow, I appreciate it. Uh, keep an eye out for that video series. It's going to be coming out this year. Uh, any questions, leave them down below. Comments, also down below. Again, like, share, subscribe. It all helps me stay at the bottom of the YouTube bucket. And until the next Mail Call Monday, you guys take it easy. Catch you then. Oh, and real quick, guys. The Nova G3 Chuck, this here, it's an Auckland, New Zealand company, I think it was, uh, St. Petersburg, Florida, but the Tecna tool is, is New Zealand, I think, or something like that, and this is Tecna tool as well. Oh, that is made, that made China. That's made in China. This, there was nothing under that UPC code. But the only thing I can get out of this is the company, and that was uh, Auckland, New Zealand, I think. Let's see here. Here we go. So, you know, it says here at uh, Focus. So, no made in. Oh, stop it. Camera's not liking me today. There we go. So, no made in any place, but Auckland, New Zealand. So... St. Petersburg, Florida, but the company is at Auckland, New Zealand or something like that. And uh, the Techna Tool thing, but made in China, right there. Had to share that. <laughs>